Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, where I cover vampires, werewolves, and other supernatural creatures. In this video, we're going to look at the movie 30 Days of Night and its sequel 30 Days of Night Dark Days. More specifically, I want to dive into a couple mysteries about this series that I've always wanted answers to. The movies were based off a comic book series of the same name created by Steve Niles and Ben Templesmith. There's also a few novels now and I read everything to uncover some really interesting stuff. The comic series and the film focus on a simple but interesting premise. A group of vampires descend on a town of Barrow, Alaska during their annual 30 days of polar night. I want to dive into two questions I've always had about this story. Why did the vampires choose Alaska as a hunting ground? And was the Queen Lilith truly the first vampire? If you enjoy videos about vampires and other supernaturals, leave a like and subscribe for new videos every week. The vampires travel to Alaska on a large ship. They send in a human familiar before the vampires to help cut the town off from the rest of the world. This familiar proceeds to sabotage the helicopter, kill the sled dogs, and he burned all the cell phones. This would allow the vampires to hunt freely and not have to worry about humans calling for help or trying to get away. Once the town was cut off, the vampires proceeded to kill the residents in a brutal fashion. The big question is, why did they choose this town in Alaska? At first, I thought that possibly they had been hunting in Alaska for a long time because of the polar night. But the vampire Marlowe says this, we should have come here ages ago, suggesting this is their first time. We actually get an answer to this question in the comic book. They didn't go to Alaska because they needed food. They went there because it was cut off from the world and they could hunt however they want and for weeks on end. So like I said, it wasn't a matter of food. It was a matter of fun. The leader of these vampires is Roderick Marlowe. He told the other vampires to sever the heads of the victims because they don't want to turn anyone. They are here to kill, and that's it. The vampires are portrayed as formidable, monstrous, nearly feral entities even down to the way they move. A stark contrast from the seductive, elegant beings often portrayed in traditional vampire lore. Vampires such as Marlowe have slightly more human features, but others have a physical appearance that is jarringly inhuman, with sharp distorted faces. They have pale skin, solid black eyes, and sport a full set of sharp teeth, rather than just two fangs like traditional vampires. Their teeth are perfect for ripping and tearing flesh, which makes them all the more terrifying. Imagine being bit by this guy. The vampires from 30 Days of Night can turn someone by biting them, scratching them, or by giving them some of their blood to drink. This man was only scratched, but he still turned into a vampire. Eben also turned himself by injecting vampire blood. The transformation is described as feeling like your blood is on fire, but it happens rather quickly, within a few minutes. Vampires will often have human slaves, known as familiars. Similar to most other series, they serve their vampire masters in hope of eventually being turned. Newly turned vampires are more like zombies than vampires because they do nothing but thirst for blood. Older vampires have much more self-control, and some can even be around humans, such as Dane from the second film and the comics. Vampires must feed on blood regularly to survive. It's not clear exactly how long they can go without it. We never see vampires feeding on any kind of animal, so either animal blood won't sustain them in the same way, or they prefer the taste of human blood. If a vampire is badly wounded, then feeding can speed up their healing ability. They can also absorb blood through their pores. When Lilith was heavily wounded, her servants would cover her in blood as to help her heal. We also see her bathing in a pool of blood in the movie. In the comic, we learn that the vampire Marlowe had somehow stumbled upon the town of Barrow, Alaska and began organizing the big hunt. He sent out messages asking other vampires to join him and 19 agreed to participate. Marlowe, being proud of his idea, then asked for one of the elders named Vicente to witness and participate in the event, saying the presence of one such as yourself will make the event truly one for the ages. Vicente agrees to go to the hunt, but not for the reasons you think. When the elder arrives in Barrow, he is angry. He says that the only reason he agreed to come was because he couldn't believe the audacity of what Marlowe had been planning to do. He wanted to arrive in time to actually stop Marlowe, but he was too late. He says this, How many centuries has it taken to become a myth? How many centuries has it taken to mesh with the living world? To make humans believe we no longer exist? Hundreds? Thousands? Now, 
With one single greedy act, you have given them reason to suspect. Suspicion and fear are the seed of our extinction. It killed my brothers and my fathers, and if this gets out, it will destroy us again. This shows us how much the elders value the secrecy of their race. An angry Vicente ripped Marlow to pieces for his stupidity and arrogance. He then ordered the remaining vampires to break the pipeline to flood the town with oil and burn it to the ground. He wanted all evidence of what happened to be completely erased. Nobody can know what happened here. In the comic, Eben's final battle is with Vicente instead of Marlowe, but he kills him in the same way, by punching a hole through his head. In the movie, Marlowe and Vicente were basically combined into one character to simplify the story. The final scene was great, but I think having one of the elder vampires kill Marlowe instead of Eben would have been much more impactful. It would have showed us that even among vampires, Marlowe was a savage. So that answers the question of why did the vampires go to Alaska? Because Marlowe wanted a hunting ground with no rules. I said earlier that Vicente is an elder, but who are the elders? Well, there are at least two of them. Lilith, the queen of all vampires, and her husband, Vicente. We don't get to see Vicente in the movies, but he is mentioned by name. In the books, they are portrayed as partners and equals ruling over the vampire race. In the second film, Dark Days, we get to see the inside of the ship that bring the vampires to Alaska. It's basically a moving fortress, full of horrors. Lilith has black eyes and the signature full mouth of sharp teeth that define these vampires. They have super strength, speed, and a great healing ability. They can even be brought back from death by giving them some blood. Vampires also have enhanced senses. In the comic, we are told that vampires' enhanced senses are dulled by the extreme cold in Alaska for some reason. Aside from these abilities, Lilith has some special ones of her own. She can communicate with others telepathically, and she could also use her powers to protect someone. It's not clear how she did it, but somehow she made it impossible for other vampires to touch Eben. The book said it was as if the vampires were burned when they tried to touch him. The vampires refer to themselves as Nosferatu. Many people think the queen is the first vampire, and is possibly the one and only Lilith from mythology. There's a few references that point to her being the first vampire. She says herself that her, along with Vicente, are the parents of all vampires. However, we learn in the book Immortal Remains that Lilith is in fact not the first vampire. They were both created by a vampire named Enoch. This is a description of him from the book. He was thin, almost emaciated looking, making prominent cheekbones into cliffs with deep vertical furrows beneath, running all the way to his sharp-edged chin. Above the cheeks were the deep hollows of his eyes, the eyeballs themselves recessed in hooded slits. A huge mole on his left eyelid added to the impression that he could barely see through that one. His hair was dark and long, hanging in greasy strands around his face. The knuckles of his right hand, the one holding on to the edge of his chair's armrest, were swollen and pale. In the book, a vampire named Dane tells us that Enoch is one of the oldest of them, possibly the oldest. So we're not even sure if Enoch is truly the first, but he is older than Lilith. We don't know how old the Queen or Enoch are, but the Queen has been alive for at least several centuries, so Enoch is probably thousands of years old. Vampires speak a very ancient and archaic sounding language that lends to this theory. The language was actually completely original for the film, created with help of a linguistics professor at the New Zealand University. It reminds me of the vampire language created for the Blade movie. Enoch possesses the same special abilities that Lilith does, able to communicate telepathically, read thoughts, and probably much more. It is implied that Enoch is physically the strongest of all vampires. Even the queen was afraid of him. Lilith is said to be Adam's first wife, but she refused to bow and escaped to the Garden of Eden, becoming mother of demons. Sounds pretty fitting, and lines up with being mother of vampires, so maybe Lilith is older than we think. It's also interesting that Lilith was written about in the books of Enoch. Enoch is the seventh man from Adam and was a biblical figure and patriarch prior to Noah's flood. He is most known for being one of only two people who were let into heaven while they were still alive. I doubt it's just a coincidence that the two oldest vampires share names with these religious figures. I wonder if the vampire Enoch and the descendant of Adam could be the same person, although the spelling of their names are different. 
one thing is for sure. The vampire's origin is supernatural. They are not merely another species, because Lilith and Enoch clearly have magic-like abilities. These vampires have one true weakness. Sunlight. If exposed, they will be burned and turned to ash in just a matter of moments. They can also be killed by being decapitated or damaged beyond what their healing abilities can handle. Their healing abilities are very good though. They can survive losing limbs, explosions, and one vampire even survived a gunshot to the head. One thing that's interesting is vampires are not harmed by holy objects of any kind, so they might not be inherently evil. These vampires have something called a racial memory, or genetic memory. When you become a vampire, you will learn certain things that you didn't know before. One of these things is the name Enoch, and most likely the vampire language. A vampire named Dane said that after a vampire is turned, if they spend more time with the vampire that turned them, they will have greater access to this racial knowledge. It also works the other way though, so lack of contact with the vampire that turned you will dull this racial memory. He also says that when there are more vampires, the memories are harder to access is if they are spread thin among all the vampires. When Eben was turned, he didn't have any contact with the vampire that turned him. This meant when he heard the name Enoch for the first time, it was familiar to him, but he didn't know why. Dane said that if his racial memory was functioning properly, he would know exactly who he is. The elders Lilith and Vicente ruled over the vampire race for many centuries. They thought it best to remain in the shadows, control the world in secret. We see in the second film, Dark Days, that the vampires control the police in Los Angeles, and probably a lot of other stuff. These elders worked hard and spent a long time convincing the world that they were nothing more than a myth. Enoch does not feel the same way though. He wants vampires to rule the world in the open and reduce the human population to cattle. He also despised Lilith for trying to seize power of her own and rule the vampires. Enoch waited until Lilith was in a weakened state and gave her a fate worse than death. He cut off her arms and legs, then removed her tongue, but she was still alive. Above her, written on the wall, it said this, the old ways have proven weak. Now is the time of the vampire. Her punishment gets even worse. Every time a new vampire is turned, they're forced to take a bite of the former queen's flesh. This has left her disfigured far beyond the removal of just her limbs. I think Enoch and Marlowe would have gotten along great. The novels reveal one other mystery about the vampire race that I thought was interesting. Although they are undead, they can actually procreate with humans. A vampire father and a human mother successfully have a child and this was a huge surprise even to the vampires. Apparently they had never tried, or it was always unsuccessful. We didn't get to see the child grow up, so it's not clear if a half vampire would look the same or not. I assume they would be immune to sunlight though. Half vampires might still have solid black eyes, but probably wouldn't have a full mouth of sharp teeth. Maybe they would have just the traditional two fangs. That's my video on some of the mysteries from 30 Days of Night. I always wanted to know if Lilith was truly the first vampire, and it turns out she wasn't. I also always wanted to know the backstory about why they went to Alaska. I was so sure that they had been hunting there for centuries or even millennia because of the polar night. Turns out I was wrong again. If you guys really enjoy 30 Days of Night, I would definitely recommend the comics. The story is slightly expanded upon and the artwork is amazing. If there's any movies or TV shows you'd like me to cover, please leave them in the comments below as I always read through them. The next movie I'm thinking about covering is Stakeland. Let me know if you think that's a good idea. If you enjoyed, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. It helps out a lot and I really appreciate it. As always, an extra big thanks to my members for supporting the channel. Roderick, Awesome Pea Shooter, Jason Miller, Cyper2890, Zothras Paradox, Adam Mokabe, Gabriel Ragsdale, Matthew Batson, Dragon Fay Rose, Emily Nixon, Onyx Cat, Jake Walker, Mark Thorpe, Stephen556, Owen Wildish, and Joseph Roman. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.